welcome to the video. Thank you so much for clicking on it. I appreciate your interest and hope to do it justice by addressing all the senses that this wonderful hobby of ours triggers. Not only in the good ways though, but also from a not so good angle. But if you prefer to put some headphones in and listen while you're going about your business, then this is the perfect time to do it because apart from applying the sense of sight, with this beautiful Vanda Rainbow Forest in full bloom, the rest is applying the sense of hearing. So in no particular order, let's start with a sense of touch because I recently made a video about using the sense of touch to understand if our orchids are getting enough light to bloom, which inspired me to make this video and go a little bit further and include all the other senses. Because our sense of touch allows us to receive information about our internal and external environments. And using the sense of touch allows us to tell if something is hot or cold, dull or sharp, rough or smooth, wet or dry. When we apply the sense of touch with our orchids, it is a great way to determine if a leaf is heating up close to burning and then we can react quicker and avoid any damage. We can also discover the texture and structure of leaves, roots and blooms and very important, especially for mounts, we can determine if media is wet or dry. One thing we should avoid as much as possible though is to touch the underside of the leaves as that is where the stomata are. I will be doing an orchid lingo video specifically on stomata so be on the lookout for that. But touching the underside of the leaves clogs up the stomata unless you know which orchids have their stomata closed and when it is safe to do so especially if we're treating the orchid and the leaves for pests. Another thing that I want to point out is try to resist the temptation of touching the root tips. Some oils and impurities on our hands and fingers or even just brushing up against a root with our arm can cause the root tips to stop growing. Especially if we have perspiration on any parts of our exposed bodies. Perspiration has salts in it and we know how quickly salts will desiccate and kill roots just by what we know about media accumulating salts. We also apply our sense of touch when it comes to repotting, determining which roots are viable and which are not. And I just so happen to be a very tactile person with my orchids, so I enjoy the sense of touch to the maximum. Moving on to another obvious sense is our sense of vision. If you are watching and not doing the podcast format, you will see this beautiful Vanda Rainbow Forest. But there is more to the sense of vision than that. In general, vision gives us the ability to see and interpret the rays of light and darkness. An incredible powerful sense that we use on the daily with our orchids. And if we're not using it, we should. We should look at them and see what's going on at a glance. Take a closer look to admire blooms. We also see new growths and roots. And we can respond very quickly when we see any pests trying to manifest themselves in our orchids. Combine the sense of vision with the sense of touch we can hopefully avoid leaves burning up or even know that what we cannot see, what feels cold to the touch, but we cannot see if the cells are in danger of collapsing, resulting in us being able to move the orchid to a warmer location. Combining the senses, mix and match, it's perfect. Looking at our orchids as often as possible is important because we can respond to an emergency that may need to be addressed immediately, again, as in pests. But I find that rot is something that can spread very quickly quickly so looking at the orchids can prevent rot from spreading and us being able to intervene as a matter of urgency. Of course we tend to look at an orchid in bloom more frequently because you know blooms. <laughs> However, once it has finished blooming, as in my case, it goes back to its shelf for the next phase of its growth and is easily back shelf forgotten. The sense of sight, using it to our advantage with our orchids is another one of the big assets we have. Hmm, now we get to the sense that brings all our orchid dreams alive, where we can sometimes actually cancel out the sense of vision because we close our eyes to apply our sense of smell. Or in some cases, our eyes will widen and we recoil from what we smell. <laughs> By applying our sense of smell, we can appreciate the rewarding fragrances of our blooms. Or, depending on what is in bloom, we enjoy the blooms from a distance. <laughs> However, our sense of smell also alerts us to something that is going wrong in the pot. Any kind of decay will permeate a smell that is pretty repulsive. Once we smell something like that, there is no waiting and the orchid has to be addressed without any concerns of whether new roots are growing 
or what time of year it is. It is way past having to consider anything else other than getting into the pot and hopefully save the orchid from declining completely. So you see how important the sense of smell is, not just to appreciate the fragrance of the blooms. Especially during the winter months, I use my sense of smell a lot and sniff many, many pots just to make sure that if I catch a whiff of decay, that I'm hopefully able to stop the rot and save my orchid. But I can already hear your mind moving to the other two senses that I have not mentioned yet. I'm getting there, but it's as if I can hear your mind racing ahead now and already asking the questions about the sense of auditory perception, aka hearing, which if you're going about your business and are listening to this video, then this is the main sense you are currently applying. So how do you hear orchids? Hang on, I'll tell you, because you can. But if you have found this video in any way, shape or form inspiring, entertaining or useful, I would really appreciate it if you could use your sense of touch and touch that like button. This way, YouTube will recognize that the video has something that more people could enjoy and will recommend it to more people. That may benefit others and it certainly benefits my channel. Thank you very, very much. So touch away. Back to the sense of hearing. So what is the sense of auditory perception? Dumb question. I know. Maybe. Humor me. Hearing is the ability to perceive sounds through an organ, such as an ear, by detecting vibrations as periodic changes in the pressure of a surrounding medium. Now, if you have heard what I just said, then you may already be aware of where I am going with how the sense of hearing is very relevant and important to apply with our orchid hobby. By applying the sense of hearing, we can assess the health and climate of our orchid pots. Every time we apply a soak, for whatever reason you may be doing so, when we fill the pot with water, we should be hearing gargling. The gas is being pushed out of the pot and filling with water will make a fantastic gargling sound, which signals that all is well in the pot. Applying the sense of sight with the sense of hearing, we can see the bubbles rise, but we can hear that gargling. This signals that the roots still have space between the media and the pot in general, confirming the gas exchanges are still working perfectly. The sense of hearing is a superpower for anyone not growing in clear pots, or if you're growing everything in clear pots, with the exception of your terrestrial or semi-terrestrial orchids. Next time you soak your pots, try to focus less on the sense of sight. Instead, focus more on the sense of hearing and then see... <laughs> I know, sorry, but I don't know which other word to use. <laughs> but you know what I mean. See if you can hear just how much noise your pot is making. You can also close your eyes as you fill the pot, but put a finger to the rim of the pot and then start filling the pot with your eyes closed, shutting out the sense of sight. When you feel the water touching your finger, stop. It's a bit risky, but in case you want to push the limits and really engage the sense of hearing, that is one way to do it. Give it a go just for the fun of it. If you have no gargling sound coming out of your pot, that orchid is close to being pot bound or is already pot bound, which is your cue to repot and freshen the media or check the roots either way. But not only that, what about hearing water pour through a pot as we flush? I don't know about you, but that sound for me is a beautiful sound because I know that the roots within the pot are having a party with all that fresh goodness surrounding them, drawing in oxygen and cleaning out any small debris. I love the sound of flushing. And then of course, goodness me, I know that this has happened to me before, hearing a pot fall and rushing to the scene like some kind of greased lightning on a windy day. If I don't hear that happening, that orchid would be on the hot terracotta floor and could suffer some severe consequences. Hearing! That answers the questions if you were wondering, huh? The sense of hearing? How does that apply to the orchid hobby? There you have it. Probably many other examples as well, but you know where I'm getting at. So if you're still with me and have not already raced to the last sense, or second to last sense because I am going to add one more just to hear what you have to say. But seeing as you're already thinking ahead of the sense of taste, let's go there. Has anyone been tempted to chomp on a juicy pseudobulb? <laughs> 
I don't blame you. I am totally with you on that. They are so tempting. But wait, what? <laughs> am I suggesting that you taste your orchid suitable? Absolutely not. But I bet that the thought has crossed your mind, or is it just me that has these crazy thoughts? But there is a way that we can apply the sense of taste with our orchids, and that is actually tasting the happy sap that they produce when they produce it. I am telling you, the sweetness of that happy sap on the palate makes me wish I could make a production out of it and create orchid syrup that is available on the shelves. It is sweet without being overly sweet. It has some serious substance and flavor without being overpowering. It has such amazing balance on the palate, full of beneficial growth hormones, which I have no idea if they would be of any benefit to us humans. Meanwhile, many other sweet things we put in our mouth are definitely not beneficial, and yet for some reason, miraculously, they have some growth hormones in them <laughs> because consuming too much of that other sweet stuff makes our waist grow. Somehow. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> but happy sap truly is melt in your mouth delicious and wow. Imagine orchid syrup for all sweet tooth cravings. No artificial additives, clear, beautiful, yummy orchid happy sap bottled to be used as a sweetener in coffee, hot chocolate, on top of pancakes, and for some of us who love our bacon with some maple syrup. Don't come for me, but I love it. <laughs> How about substituting that by using orchid happy sap? I'm dead serious. <laughs> if you have never tasted happy sap, you are missing out. But hold on, before you drop your device and go rushing to your orchids to check who has happy sap or not and want to taste it, give me just one more moment because there's one more sense, yeah, one more that I want to bring to your attention. That would be common sense. So, according to Miriam Webster, common sense is defined as the following. Sound and prudent judgment based on a simple perception of the situation or facts. So, now you're going to say, why is common sense important? <laughs> okay, let me tell you. It is a form of practical decision making and the ability to imagine consequences of something we do. It stops us making irrational mistakes and makes it easier to make choices on what to do. And um, yeah, we are not born with common sense. We develop it over time. Do you see where I'm getting at? Not everybody is born an orchid grower. We develop experience over time. Same as with common sense. So I would like to hear from you. How do you apply common sense when it comes to your orchids? Do you even think about it? Or do you do things and you consider them instinct without defining it as common sense? But now you recognize that you are in actual fact applying common sense to how you grow your orchids. Back to the sense of taste. That is a little bit of food for thought. <laughs> now, <laughs> if you're still with me, thank you. In your opinion, just one last question remains. How do the senses rank in order of importance? That would include common sense. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that it brought a few thoughts and realization back to the surface from the subconscious mind. And if you have never considered just how every sense is activated by what we consider orchid care, then I am glad that I've managed to bring you another dimension of this beautiful hobby of ours. And those are they, five senses plus one, because you know, us orchid growers are greedy. If we can get a little bit more out of something, we try to get a little bit more out of something. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciated having you here. And just one more thing, have yourselves a beautiful day on that one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care, bye.